it says uh, that we are streaming and we're live hopefully you know it's funny is we we went we went uh we're winding down this is the last day of of official technical uh, program of pcic yes the official technical program of pcic our last day nihad and i have been here i came in friday, friday night, yeah. you came in friday night friday night as well so it's uh saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday yeah will be tomorrow should be. five this is day five which i think i updated the the thing everything correctly and tomorrow is going to be tutorials, tutorials. Yeah, I'm I have... not doing tutorials. Tom is doing a tutorial, which I'm sure will be very, very popular. I have a like the PCIC executive committee has the business meeting, so this one I'll be I'll be doing tomorrow. It'll be like eight to five all day. Eight to five all day. So today, all right. So yesterday, hey Eugene Santiago, we're live. Oh, the, 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 it's like the, I know. So so they're in Pennsylvania. So unfortunately, Eugene, Gene, I am not going to be able to uh, get to the eastern section because I'm here in Denver. I don't get home till Friday. I leave Friday. I get home late, late Friday. And um, <laughs> Facebook, Nihad looks like he needs a nap. I'll tell you what, we have been, today was a very rough day. We, uh, I know I had a 5.30 in the morning conference call because the East Coasters, don't realize, you know, now I know, now I know what it's like when you're out on the East Coast. So, um, so I had a 530 uh, meeting and I had meetings this morning, We, but I did get a few uh, technical sessions in, as I think, uh, oh, oh, Eugene says I came all the way from Albuquerque. Well, maybe, Eugene, oh my goodness. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not just it's been a long day. We've been going on, at least myself. I've been going on like what four or five hours of sleep each night since I got here. So I guess at yeah. the end of the week it just gets exhausting. But I'm not planning to go to bed after we're done. I'm going to visit the hospital suites and I'll probably be up till two in the morning and then I have a meeting tomorrow at eight. But one I'll more tell day. You. One more day. I'm gonna keep pushing. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about today. That uh, <laughs> so here at the at the petroleum chemical in, in industry, industry committee, committee conference, conference PCIC, PCIC conference, conference. Uh, we had um, oh, okay so what did you which one did you go did you go to one the first thing in the morning uh, or did you have meetings no I had to uh, what did I do in the morning? that's a good question there were some things with uh, with the vendors and registration so I was mm. in the war room of our local committee so I didn't go I went to the one in the afternoon uh, it was like a safety committee paper. Safety committee. Yeah, yeah there, there was a safety committee paper uh, this morning on arc flash exposure outside of enclosed equipment. Um, uh, that I was... I went to was a relay. So like the, yeah, I went the to the relay, relay one yeah. too. So I think the, the, uh, see probably the relay one, I was sitting up front because I, I, I need my glasses, but... Uh, the relay up front, the, I mean, the, the relay up front, the one, the, the one that was at two, I think it was at two o'clock. Yeah, it, it's late, guys. Sorry about that. I'm, yeah, I'm it's late. So I'm tired. It was a good week, though. Very good. Costa Rica's in the house. Juan Pablo, thank you. Cheers. Ryan Jackson. We are, Ryan, we are doing well. Um, hey, uh, How's it going, Ryan? Hey, Ryan. And uh, Eugene Sant and Santiago, you got, uh, you're got you out there with David and crew. So, and I, Tom, is Tom Moore out there? I'm not sure Tom Moore's out there. I'm not sure which Tom you were talking about. But, um, but yeah, so tell David I said, hey. But, uh, but so, so today, so we went to the one, what was, where was it at? It was, maybe it wasn't at 2 o'clock. It might have been at 3. Uh, it was actually at 4. No, it had to be at 3. It was, it was right here, operating in the, no, that wasn't it. It was at, uh, it was at 2 o'clock. There it is right here. Ensuring accuracy and quality when performing arc flash studies on low voltage power distribution equipment. Mm -hmm. So the challenges in arc flash analysis, if you're doing the studies, you have to think about the available fault current from the utilities. You have to think about all of your impedance diagrams uh, that you are, that you, well, look at this, we got, we got Willie Snyder on there too. Man, Odell, I'll tell you what, we didn't think we were going to have anybody yeah, on here. These guys are great. They're hardcore. Hardcore. Oh, guys, uh, 
Tom is just uh, being popular. I'm just the guy. Just yeah. helping. Oh, no. Just... <laughs> tired. I'm tired. We've been, we had a long day. So, so we, we went to a few sessions today. We all, all of us, Nihad's a part of the uh, committee that does the, a lot of the organization of, uh, of this. And he works specifically for the hospitality groups and, and fights the fires and all that other good stuff. I had uh, I had some business related from a company from my perspective, uh, a few conference calls. So I'm working in and out of that, uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the eastern section if I can even get to the eastern section. So I was looking at hotels out there. I was looking at how long of a drive that was going to be, and then next week I'm traveling again. And you know, there's this young lady at home that I love so much, and her name is Bobby Joe, well, and I hardly get to see her. her. She is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in any case, so we had a very busy day today. Um, I know Kevin Arnold is in, so he he and I are doing a uh, tutorial. tutorial. Uh, we haven't met Kevin yet. Kevin, yeah. If you're out there, we want to see you. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't hide in your room, Kevin. Yeah. I know you're here. I know you're here. I've been hunting him. <laughs> Respond to my text, please. <laughs> no, I didn't text him. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I didn't text him. Excellent. So, uh, so, so that was today. Today was today. Uh, I know. I went to that session. Another cool session that um, looked interesting was called "Operating in the Danger Zone." Contactor dropout versus fuse clearing time. Uh, and all of these papers are, if you're a registered with the, um, if you're registered with the, with the PCIC for the event, you can download all of the IEEE papers yeah. and read and print them and talk, contact the authors if you wanted to. So Tom, something off topic, when you said the operating danger zone, I just thought, remember danger zone, Top Gun. Oh, Top Gun, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. wish I broke my glass. So there was one of the both. That's right. He has yeah. one of the hospitality rooms, because he's Mr. Hospitality Room himself. One of the hospitality rooms had a Top Gun theme. They had, um, am I going to be in Louisville next week? No, I'm not, Ryan. This will be the first Nika convention that I have missed because I got double booked. I'm also missing the IEC convention because I have a uh, UL meeting. So I am, the, I'm just uh, beside myself that in 20 years, I haven't missed the NECA conference, I haven't missed an IEC conference, and I'm missing both of those this year, just because of all these other things that are going on. But uh, so that one, that one hospitality room <laughs> that had a uh, Top Gun theme, they had a virtual reality flight simulator, uh, and they said they had uh, they they were given away the Tom Cruise glasses. I call them Cool Hand Luke glasses, yeah. right? And then um, what was the other thing they had? Uh, they and had the, like a little, like little. It thing. was a little plain, a scrunchie. So, it was like a nice scrunchie. Was like wearing like a dressed up like a pilot. I said, you know, you look better than Tom Cruise. Yeah. She gave me those shades, and she said, once you put them on, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. And right? he did. And I believe her. Yeah. So I have Tom here. Like he Tom had the same shades, but it's like you have the name. I got the look. So, yeah, I, I wish I would have brought my shit with me. I look exactly like Tom Cruise. And yeah, now I'm did. thinking I should just move to Hollywood. And you should. You should move to Hollywood. Out of business. And I'll there you go. Hang there. up the shingle for Monkey Bar and yeah, uh, just go do uh, Tom Cruise. Oh my goodness! You see what I put That's up the with? Kind of fun we get. So we have the technical stuff in the morning, and then in the evening we kind of go crazy. Yeah, you know, and that's the other cool thing about uh, about <laughs> the PCIC is all day it is really really hardcore technical because you're watching you're 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 watching presentations on papers uh like for example uh, electric motors for hazardous areas must meet the electrical safety and other requirements for industrial equipment there was a uh, expanding available higher horizons new battery technologies in industrial ups systems uh well, well another good one uh, how to safely island a chemical facility uh there's a lot of very Interesting, but the way the presentations and the way the papers are written, they're very down to earth, very easy to to read, etc. And 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 the dialogue is really good. And the Q and A sessions are absolutely awesome. Yeah, and yeah, but, you and even better. So Q and A, you can always walk up to the author and get his or her contact, and then you can you know start yeah a more networking conversation. Exactly. It is all about networking, and that's very similar to all of those IEI section meetings and all of those IEI meetings. You network at those locations. You build your. <laughs> I'm going to show my age you you grow your rolodex of contacts and when you have those technical questions <laughs> you reach out to them so, and not too many people even know what a rolodex is these days yeah i know what it is what it is just like i'm laughing because apparently 
I should apologize yesterday when doing our our uh, oh yeah oh, instead of saying exchange business card I said credit card I didn't even notice until we went up like up air and, we up, and Tom and Dean was like yeah where's your business card like, I got where's your credit card I want to I want I want to instead of saying business card I said credit card so yeah. you don't exchange credit cards here sorry yeah, you don't... yeah. I didn't even know when you got like, hilarious like, what I didn't even know like what are these guys talking about that was perfect that was was, that like, was just perfect. And I was like, yeah, I don't have a card of me. It's like, and then the King Business card. And we're talking about the, the video. So you can check out the video. It's also on my YouTube site from yesterday. We had the current chair of PCIC and the future chair of PCIC. Yeah. And uh, who now the next year's PCIC is in New Orleans. Okay. And, and you say it, New Orleans. Yeah. And he said it correctly the first time. He I'm said, Orleans. we're going to be in New Orleans. And then during the conversation, he said, we're going to be in New Orleans. New Orleans. And, and and you it know, was just Louisiana's good. Louisiana's not letting me in. Because and you don't, like, yeah. you don't tell somebody who lives in New Orleans uh, that you're going to New Orleans. <laughs> I would say Nola. Nola's easier. There you go. And <laughs> OLA. Yeah. yeah. So, so today was today was a really good. They had uh, they had uh, high torque, low inrush current motor design, or voltage recovery dependence for loaded start conditions. Electric motors for hazardous areas must meet the. So there were a lot of really good technical <laughs> discussions, and then in the evening. In the evening is hospitality rooms. And each hospitality rooms, I mean, they have, there's food. You don't have to buy dinner anywhere. You, 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 you go to the, these different rooms and every room has different food. Yeah. They have different drinks. We had uh, the Eaton uh, hospitality room. Missed ice cream. Uh, yeah, we had ice cream. We had an ice cream bar in ours. And oh my gosh, I tell you what, I think I gained 10 pounds yesterday just on that ice cream bar. I gained 25. Yeah, I was sending pictures home to my wife, but it's yeah. probably Joe. So, um, so you had, we had an ice cream bar in there. We had uh, all different types of, I, I called it vodka night, but they said it was, um, they gave it a. They said it was '80s night or something, '90s night. I don't know what it was, but it was. They, they had all these different types of vodka, and they were making those types of drinks. And then, um, was that like the artist, like the silhouette? You know, we had an individual who, uh, she is an artist, and she did silhouettes. And what she would do is take uh, a piece of paper. And uh, <laughs> Eugene says he's starving right now. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, they had the best shrimp, and the shrimp were those and the chicken and the chicken. Yeah, oh my gosh, like the chicken! Seafood, the chicken was so there was good. breaded chicken on. St oh, it was just absolutely delicious. So you guys know where to be next year. After, oh yeah, next New year. New Orleans, not New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. go to New Orleans next year, and uh, hopefully you'll see Nihad and I giving a paper or or a tutorial or something, um, or just like hanging out, just or like just hanging out. Place. Yeah, you never know. yeah, absolutely. Uh, be a sponge at these events. So, um, but yeah, so so that was today, and then in the evening we have all these different uh, rooms. Now tomorrow, tomorrow it's not necessarily. I mean, the the major program. So if you paid whatever you paid for for the program registration, registration that material is over. If you uh, others paid for tutorials. Now, can you give a little overview of what a tutorial is? What do we mean by a tutorial? Okay, so a tutorial, and, and, and first of all, so tutorial registration is separate. So you can yeah. you register for the conference and not for a tutorial, like don't like not pay it for a tutorial, tutorial registration, or you can pay for both, or you can just pay for a tutorial. Let's say if a local person in Denver this year and is interested in a tutorial that Tom is giving, Tom and Kevin Arnold, on the NEC changes, 2023 NEC changes, then they can sign up for the tutorial separately. So I guess my point is you don't have to be attending the conference to go a tutorial. Right. What is a tutorial to answer someone's question? It is a session, usually a four hour session. So we have two, uh, four tutorials in the morning, eight, mm -hmm. to, uh, eight to noon, and then there is one to five. Yep. Uh, so four, four each running in parallel. And a tutorial is simply just like a, you get like a, a subject matter expert, like in, like Tom, for example, and Kevin Arnold, and will be doing the NEC changes, and it will be more of a four-hour presentation, like more like an extended presentation. Or I don't want to call it lecture because oftentimes it's more like an interactive kind of event. Yeah. So just like we, for example, Tom will be talking on changes, NEC changes. Another tutorial could be on. Well, I'll read NEC the titles. Here's right. so here's the like titles. Expert, it could be one expert uh, matter at what. Like one person, two, right. like depending, like, and then they can present. There'll be a discussion. Very, very knowledgeable. Very, very uh, engaging. Yeah, engaging. So here, here are the four, 
four tutorials in the morning, wiring methods in the 2023 National Electrical Code for conductors and cables up to 35,000 volts. The second tutorial, standby battery chemistries, construction and sizing concepts. The third tutorial is AC power substation grounding, analysis and mitigation for touch and step voltage hazards. That is gonna be, who's doing that one? That is being done by David Lewis and Jeffrey Drummond. I don't know. I, I know Jeff. I know the first guy. And then this, the, the, the third one, the fourth one is repairs, reconditions, replacements of AC electric, mo electric motors in petro, petroleum and chemical industries. Those are the four in the morning. And all the information on the website, PCIC website, if you're, anyone is interested yep. to kind of learn about the tutorial abstract and the uh, biography of the uh, instructors. Yep. And then, yep. And then in the afternoon, we have the National Electrical Code 2023 Significant Changes. I wonder who's doing that one. I heard he's like the best guy. I heard he's, I heard the guy's awesome. Yeah. And that's what I heard. And I heard he traveled all the way from uh, West by God, Virginia, yeah. smiling yeah. to say it. Right. Cool. And, um, and he's going to just, and it's him and Kevin Arnold, and they're just going to yeah. I mean, rock the house. Yeah, I mean, it's like you, you just died to see that guy present. I, I, that's what I heard. I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything. I've never particulars. met him yet. Never, ever met him, but I think nope. I heard like he's just like a wizard. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I heard he's a magician. <laughs> so the second one is metric development for electrical power. Power systems, metric, I got to read the, okay, there's the abstract. Petrochemical and process industries rely on electrical, po electrical power to produce their products. Interruption of electrical power can cause environmental safety, production, and economic issues. To determine the extent of these issues, the petrochemical, the pe petrochemical <laughs> and process late, industries <laughs> need to understand the cause, frequency, and severity of electrical power interruptions affecting their sites. This tutorial will look at how to measure, assess, and predict electrical power interruptions for their sites three presenters on that one that's right. interesting i don't know if the title really aligns with a metric i think of the metric system oh this is what i thought were you yeah like, i thought there'd be like the comparison metric and then the, the, the that's why system. either a good title or a good abstract makes a big difference yeah. all right the last two rethinking medium voltage adjustable speed drives for motor control and then the last is an introduction to digital switch gear. Digital switch gear. Who's doing that one? Okay, that is being done by Dr. Oh, man. Okay, so it's Dr. He's got a very long name. Harshavardhan Karandikar. And he goes by Dr. Harsh. Harsh. <laughs> Dr. Harsh. The harsh name. <laughs> yep, and then there's... Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Xavier. So, uh, and it's, it looks like uh, both of these guys are ABB. So, senior member. Yep, excellent. So then that, that's Ballroom F. So those are the tutorials. And uh, I know this is the other thing too, since you mentioned ABB and uh, Thomas Eaton, of course. Uh, you know, uh, some of these tutorials are presented by uh, manufacturers. So yeah. if you're an end user, you get a chance to kind of, you know, have a, a contact. Oh, sorry. Willie Snyder. He smashed the like button three times. No. Even numbers. No. No, no, right. no, no, no. You're right. No. You're Don't right. listen to him. Don't listen to him. No. You're right. You're right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, we three times. Numbers for the for the like and even numbers for the dislike. That's right. Even numbers for the Tom, dislike. Oh Don't man. Listen to Tom. It's too late. Too late. Yes. Okay, Mr. Santiago. Batteries uh, such a big issue, so that would be a great session. Yeah. And he's still starving. Excellent. All right, sorry. I, I, I got I got like all I'm like, oh my gosh, he hit it three times, no, but you're okay. If you want to hit the thumbs down, you got to hit it twice. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So yeah, and then uh, oh, and then tomorrow morning there's a tutorial a tutorial author's breakfast. Yeah. I get to go to the tutorial author's and breakfast. And I believe there's a lunch as well for the for the, one. For the afternoon one. Oh, so yeah, that's but right. I think, yeah, I mean, and the tutorial, so afternoon. what they do is, if you're doing a tutorial, so here's what they do. They bring you in for breakfast, and then they, oh, I'm going to get a gift. Yeah, because you're presenting like an author. Yeah. I'm going to get a gift. I haven't seen the author's gift yet. Well, I've seen it. Okay. You know what it is? It's a, it's a very nice Stanley thermos. 
Oh, okay. The big, okay, the big Stanley the, thermos. I saw the leaf having the big right. Yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a it's gift. This big. It is. See, yeah, it is. I remember. That's right. Oh, yeah. see, that's the other nice thing when you do when you do presentations, they give you really nice gifts. So anyway, so we, they bring you into the room, they give you a little gift, but then they go over some of the logistics about how to use the camera or how to use the microphones and stuff like that to get up there, get mic'd up and all that yeah. good stuff. So, and my, uh, they sold out my, my tutorial, I believe, I think they said there were like five extra slots or whatever, but I just got a, a message from someone who said, uh, yeah, Willie Cyrus has got you. <laughs> Dad coming, man, he did hook, line, and sinker, man, that was just wrong. So anyway, but yeah, so uh, so we're going to be talking 2023 code changes tomorrow, and then and then uh, that's it. Yeah, you know, go home on uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah, I like get early in the morning, right? I get yeah, I got a 7 a.m. flight, and uh, I get I don't know what yeah. you got. What time? One. Oh, one. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. I go much earlier. Yeah. yeah, so I just got. I had to get home, and I was hoping to get out to the eastern section. Which, you know, I'm gonna have to ask. You know, I don't know. I got. I, it's just gonna be tough. Because by the time I even get out there, it's four and a half hours to five hour drive. And if I leave in the morning, I don't get there till the afternoon. And it's just, uh, it's just too much. I can't do it. My body can't do it. I'm getting old, Willie. <laughs> Santiago says I'm the gift. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't resemble that remark. So anyway, they're out there at the eastern section of the IAEI and hopefully everybody out there who is anybody is going to go to at least one of the section meetings. There's after the Eastern section, there's, there's two more. I think we've got the Southern section and, um, uh, Mr. Snyder, am I going to cover? I am. So here's the thing. So I don't know. So the IEEE is very particular about brands and commercialism. commercialism. Not allowed. It is absolutely foreboding. So whenever we do our presentations, there is, I have to, if there is a piece of equipment that has the, the manufacturer's name on it, I got to blur it out. I can't put any logos on the uh, slides. They are very strict about commercialism. And, and in a way, it's good. Yes. And, and you, can, you can mention your company name, right? You have to say my employer or the, you know, the company. Uh, yeah, I can't even say, yeah. I, I can't say Eaton. And if I... Uh, and in some cases, like if you're in the middle of your presentation and you and you say, look, well, we have a product. Oh, man, that is like ungood. I cannot say I have a product or we have a product or uh, uh, a catalog number or 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 anything like that. And sometimes you get questions from the audience like in the Q&A and they're asking something specific about, about your company. So you're just going to have to take it. Like, you know what? We can just discuss this offline. offline. So that, at what, you know just like on the side or whatever. No, yeah. you can't talk about any commercial. Even if you're presenting a paper on yep. an application, usually there's a product uh, involved with the application, but it just has to be very, the only the only time you're allowed to mention your- In your, your introduction. Name, that, that the first slide, you got Thomas Demetrovich, for example, and then Ethan. Other than that, no mention, no logos, nothing. That's right, yeah. So, so Willie, it's, it's, this is one of those really, um, I, it, it is good and it's bad. I mean, it's good. It's it's good in that nobody is trying to sell anything. You can't push a product. You can't. You have to. You're you're strictly a technical topic. Uh, the bad part is that you've is just trying to be careful because it always slips out. You know, oh, at Eaton we did this, or you know, this is how we do it, or and I'm not sure how my competitors do it. You can't talk like that. Yeah, so so yeah, it's so, really hard. So I'm wearing the shirt. It's like the Denver. This is our short like local committee, so the, yep. then for our triple E. But if I were to present, I won't be allowed that. I, this would be maybe okay, but if let's say I'm wearing a shirt that has a, a, a manufactured logo, right. I, I won't be able. I can't present with the logo. Yeah, so I have to wear a jacket or just kind of somehow yeah. wear something with no logo. Like you can even show up with a you know like a branded. Sure. Yeah, at the I know at the at the uh, at the electrical safety workshop, uh, I was chair last year, and we had a few people that had their logo yeah. under their jacket. We actually put tape over it, yeah. and to hide their logo, so that uh, there was. A, and, and you you think, boy, that's kind of ridiculous, but because they're you know they're on stage, and and, and probably ninety percent of the people couldn't read it anyway. But still, you're you're you you know we are very protective of that. Rules so. are rules. It's just it's but. 
But after the presentation, in the back of the room, I can always say, hey, you know, IEI has a cool book and, uh, and all that jazz. Yep. Yeah, Willie Snyder says, none of the changes favor any manufacturer, which is true. Uh, I, I, I don't think there is anything in there that, um, any, that, that benefits any, any one single manufacturer. Uh, there's probably some in this stuff in there that benefits some good contractors. Uh, there might be so I think we had a little bit of GFCI expansion. Uh, an AFCI, like the sleeping quarters. Yeah, yeah that's, that wasn't major. Sure, yeah, that's not major. Yeah. Um, we uh, we removed receptacles from kitchens. That that hurt uh, a lot of manufacturers. That that took a lot. That that, yeah. that removed receptacles. But I mean, at the end of the day, honestly, it's all about safety. Uh, yeah, I was exactly. I say that. I mean, if, yeah. if it, in my mind, if if the change makes uh, our solution safer, of course, someone you know, some the man, some manufacturers out there will benefit because the product will be sold. But at the same time. Yeah. You know, well, here's I the thing. It's not just for the value and the benefit yeah. you're getting, which is safety versus yeah. you know the product. No one buys a product because they like the product. You just buy it because of the benefits you're getting out yeah. of it. So if it's safety, I think it, it's worth. Absolutely. Well, you know, you think about the 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 uh, the structure owner benefits because they have a a better installation, a safer installation. Right. Um, the the distributors, the contractors, and they're just they're reducing their liabilities. If you think about it, I mean, a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of requirements in the code are there also to reduce the liability of the installer and the manufacturer and everybody involved in that whole value chain and 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 the builder. You know, if you think about it, if you can have a technology that prevents a house from burning down because of an electrical problem, prevents an electrical electrocution because of an electrical problem, you're avoiding avoiding the court times. You know, you know and, and like if you like, you're like you yeah. a facility, they're trying to, you know, like, like ah, so so Willie Snyder says, what is safer about Class A versus GFPE? So, I mean, the fundamental difference between the two, Class A, uh, will protect a healthy individual from heart going into defibrillation because it trips very fast. Uh, yeah. Ground fault protection of equipment is for equipment protection, but they both play a role. But, you know, honestly, in safety. Uh, you know, uh, to, 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 I mean, my opinion, to your point, I think Willie Snyder, I, don't, yeah. I can't see the chat, I'm sorry. Yeah. But the big difference is timing. Uh, GFCI yeah. plus A, and in special with GFCIs, they are tested as a unit ground fault circuit interrupter. So it detects and interrupts at the same time. So right. the whole, it's like a big one assembly that does both detection and interruption. For ground fault protection equipment, oftentimes it's a relay. So the relay detects, but then sends a signal to a breaker, or a, let's say, yeah, well, but 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 but, but like a, like a molded case control, circuit yeah. breaker too, right? So, yeah. but but then so if if it's a relay, uh, let's say a, a breaker or something, yeah. like a, let's say a, a mechanism, whatever it is, to to yep. drop power, the ground fault protection of equipment is only tested for the detection, not the, the time, the so total clearing the time, total clearing time. So we could detect in like let's say five milliseconds, which is really good quick but then how long it's going to take for the breaker to disengage if it's like a, a, right. a, a, a integrated trip unit like the, thomas said the, the low voltage breaker they have the trip unit integrated into the unit so they're all tested at the same time but they're not required to meet the trip curve which right. tom and i covered in one of our programs with gfci's which is designed to hopefully interrupt power before the human person like the heart gets into internal fibrillation right so for a gfpe it's kind of the, the trip times are much much slower because when you're protecting a motor uh, or like a conductor bus bar or whatever bus bar or whatever right they, they're not they don't have the same vulnerability to current that you that we are humans have so this yeah. kind of the time timing is the main thing theory of operation is the same like detecting yeah. a ground fault you know it's, it's the same ground fault is a ground fault same technology the uh, you know the zero sequence or the donut right. kind of type window CT kind yep. of detection, right? but it's just a matter of the timing, how quick this thing reacts, and we need it. It's very crucial to be quick enough to prevent. No, but that is that's when if you are touching it, right? So what you're what everything that we just talked about is as if. I touched an exposed conductor, or I touched something that was energized, and the device had to clear it. The other benefit 
of GFPE and GFCI is if there's a wiring problem or there's a fault in the system, these devices will clear the fault before someone touches it. Yeah. So on the, in the case of GFPE, and this was the mentality or thought process that we had in Article 555 for marinas, yeah. we said, look, we employed 30 milliamp and 100 milliamp ground fault protection of equipment. Why? Not because that will prevent the heart from going into defib, not because that will provide value to somebody who's swimming into a field. It's because if there is a problem because of the degradation of the equipment, and and I would I, uh, you know you 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 have marina pedestals you have the wires that might go down into the water if there's a problem you clear that fault before someone is has even a chance to engage with it so there's value on both sides of those now he says um, HVAC equipment that is cord and plug connected is GFPE per 440. HVAC equipment uh, that is cord. I thought, I thought he was referring to 210.8F. No, no, he said 440. Yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, Willie, I. You know, honestly, Tom, this is just this could be just me. I don't like to get too hang up on 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 terminology. You know, the there's a ground fault. We need to clear a ground fault, and you know whether it's a person GFCI for personal protection or GFPE. Yeah. We need to clear the fault. So I won't get too hung up on, on the terminology, but it's the th theory is the same. I mean, technology is the same. It's just a matter of how quick you respond. A motor is more exactly. forgiving when it comes to the short circuit yeah. ground fault current. We are not as forgiving. So that's why we need a device to act quick enough, like Tom said, uh, GFCI yeah. is even. That, and again, that's when you come in touch, in, right. in contact yeah. with it. And even and even if you're not in touch, we need to, that's what the GFCI thing too, because of the, uh, the way that they're designed. Even if there's a leakage somewhere that this leakage is not going through a person yet right. we interrupt power because the, you know if someone like it's more like we're being vigilant we're not waiting until you know an, an individual comes in touch with a faulty piece of equipment we try to detect the problem and interrupt power before someone gets right. because you never know this could be a matter of life and death for someone okay so 440 willie snyder says um, HVAC equipment that is cord and plug connected. Uh, I'm, so here's the power of NFPA Link. You can just go out to NFPA Link. I brought up 440 and I did a search for ground fault, right? And I'm looking for the, the short circuit and ground fault protection device, overload protection, time delay. There's not two, there's ground fault, multimotor, hermetic. I don't see a reference to ground fault protection of equipment on cord and plug connected equipment. And, and you know what I say, HVAC. Willie, is give me a reference. If you, you got me into the ballpark, 440, but I'm not seeing GFPE for cord and plug. Let me search for cord and plug. What were you going to say? No, as so I say, this is, uh, uh, I think, the question with HVAC specifically, not just right. like Article 440. So yeah. I'm searching all of yeah. 440. Uh, yeah, cord, and, and I'll just search for cord. Cord connected equipment. For cord connected equipment such as room air conditioning. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right. I Now I see what you, when you said HVAC equipment, you're talking uh, it, 440.13. So for cord connected equipment such as room air conditioners, indoors. these are the LCDEs, right? Yeah. Uh, household refrigerators and freezers, drinking water coolers and beverage. Separate or attachment plug or receptacle should be permitted to serve as the disconnecting means. That's not it. Um, hold on. There is there is a there is a uh, section in here that talks about in the cord, right? Um, hold on. There's the rating, and what do they call that? That's called. Um, is that the LCDE? LCDE. What's LCDE? Leakage current detection. Oh, LCDI. Maybe? LCDI, yeah, yeah interrupt. But this is for the uh, for arc fault detection. It's not ground fault protection. LCDI. It's like a replace replace. It's like an alternative to be used uh, instead of an AFCI. Yeah, where is the where is the, where is the requirement? Where's the requirement? So, um, oh man, single phase cord and plug connected room air conditioners. This is four forty dot sixty five. Four forty dot sixty five. 
um, LCDI. There it is. So single phase cord and plug ro okay. connected room air conditioner shall be provided with one of the fa following factory installed devices, leakage current detector interrupter, an LCDI, an arc fault circuit interrupter, heat detecting circuit interrupter, HDCI. The protection of device shall be integral part of the attachment plug or be located in the power supply cord within 12 inches of the attachment. So I I yeah. think, well, hold on. He says, this is not for ground fault protection. That's really good current, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I gave you the three types that you have required. Now, he says 440.3 references 210.8F, and you know what? We took out 440.3. Yes, yeah, I thought the question was 210.8F. This is like when HVAC, yeah. Well. Yeah, well, 440.3 does not exist anymore because if regardless of what you're, where you're plugging it in, you should be following 210.8, period. Yeah. So if you have a cord and plug connected uh, air conditioner HVAC unit and you plug it in the kitchen, GFCI protected. If you plug it in the garage, GFCI protected. If you plug it in an outdoor receptacle, GFCI protected. Well, well, if you now, if you plugged it in the living room, probably not. So then, what you have to GFCI do is, in the living room, yeah. yeah. So then, unless you, you're six feet away from a sink or something, which I don't see. Yeah, sink yeah, in the room. yeah. I mean, you may have a living, you may have a sink in your living room, but I don't have one no, in my living room. I don't know. <laughs> I live, live in the wash. Yeah, so so what they did in the 2023 code cycle is they removed, and that's a good, that's another good significant change that uh, hopefully David Williams will be able to share with everybody out there at the eastern section, that uh, they removed many of those dot threes out of there. So and now so Willie Snyder says so so hardwired is different. Uh, yeah. Hardwired is different because there are some areas in a home where there is GFCI protection for receptacles, and there are other areas in the home, uh, or residential or other dwelling, where the GFCI is for the outlet. So what you or and then if you go to two ten dot eight, it's so not F. Maybe, maybe you want to share some uh, highlight on the outlet and receptacle differences because it's something yeah. So D two ten dot eight D. So what 210.8D has is automo automotive vacuum. This is regardless if it's a receptacle or not. And there's drinking water coolers, high pressure spray wash, uh, dishwasher, sump pumps, vending machines. I don't see air conditioners in here. I don't see HVAC no, no, in here at all. Listed, no. no, it's, it's not in D. 210.8F. Right. So 210.8F is not listed in there either. But yeah, if it's, it's a, just like it's not an yeah, it doesn't spell it out as HVAC. It's like outlet out, outlets out, yeah, for outdoors. Out, outdoor outlets. Yeah. yeah. So hardwired. If you put a hardwired indoors, then it would not need to be GFCI protected because you would have to look at all of the requirements in 210.8. I know. I think Tom. This oh. is like a, go ahead. No, go ahead. As I say, yeah, you know, we always had those conversation about the. Uh, the difference between block, cord and block connected versus hardwired, and why would you protect them? You know, cord well, and yeah. So we like a big discussion every cycle. We had that, and and we had that debate, and that's why we made the changes we did. Yeah. So if you looked at two, remember, last cycle we made some changes about the receptacle and 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 about specific appliances. And I know we had the discussion last cycle, but we didn't make the change. But we made the change this cycle. So the discussion was, is the hazard the receptacle or is it well, the appliance, appliance that's plugged in? And it was the appliance that's plugged in. So right. that's why I, 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 I find it kind of, I, I think it's not even, we should even argue whether it's block cord, cord and block connected or hardwired. It doesn't matter. It's the, if this appliance or piece of equipment is going to fail it doesn't matter how it's powered right right you don't you don't remove the hazard by hardwiring it yeah. yet you remove the protection yeah which right so make and, sense and, and that did not make sense so but in any case and we've lived with that for so this cycle we went to uh, in 210.8a we expanded to all receptacles and kitchens because we said you know you plug a lot of stuff in a kitchen which right kitchen. And, and appliances and then we said well wait a second you're not picking up the hardwired so then we added 210.8d D for no, not yeah, 210.8 D for specific appliances. So if you have a branch circuit that's supplying a specific appliance, then we want that GFCI protection in the branch circuit so that regardless of what appliance you put in or what vintage appliance that you put in, you're going to have GFCI protection for that equipment. 
and then we did the outdoor outlets, which was everything. So, so we made a significant change in 210.8D for specific appliances, regardless if they're cord and plug or hardwired, because of the yeah. statistics and the deaths. Which, in fact, uh, we called up CPSC database and we added some, like microwave ovens. It was amazing how many people got killed yeah. on a microwave oven. Yeah. I, it's just it's just uh, amazing. So in any case, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, I, I think it was a good change, and this should this is the way it should it should it should have it have been it should. Oh, I guess I'm English now. I'm tired. This is how it should have been long ago. So Willie Snyder says, why wouldn't AC units be in two ten point eight D specific appliances? <sighs> Why wouldn't the AC unit be in there? Willie, uh, I look uh, forward to your public input. I was going to say, the, I mean, yeah, the, the, the development of this requirement, and I can tell you this, but this, the 210.8F was created based on a public comment that I submitted. So it was kind of my, originally my idea because of an yeah. incident. So I wasn't going after HVAC specifically, the, the, the whole sad story, there was, I think back in 2006 or seven around the time, uh, a, a boy in Chicago, 10 years old, he was playing out in the backyard with his buddy. And, you know, there's an air conditioning unit, a condenser was just sitting out there, just, you know, just sitting there. And the boy wanted to jump off the fence. There's like a fence between the two homes. So he jumped well, the fence and landed on the air conditioning unit, the, which happened to be, I think those miswiring and it was faulty sitting at 480 volt and the not poor, 480 uh, it was two, sort of 240 240 volt 240 volt so it's 40, so 240 volt so the poor kid just when he landed there he was kind of grabbing the fence and you know so the fence is at ground potential and then this is two 240 volt when he landed on the uh, on the unit he was yeah. killed instantly so it the 210.8f wasn't after hvac unit specifically just like anything outdoor Right. Which just picked up the HVAC equipment, and uh, yeah. I think the thumb pump, like the pumps, there was some the pumps. Yeah, there are other yeah. other p other. There's other. There's a it's lot of other like things outdoor, because the hazard outdoor, it's just you know, it's the same thing. It's just like there's water, and some places you know, like if you're like in north, I live in Canada, but if you're in northern part of the U.S., you know, there is snow and it melts, and there's water and it's twisty. Yeah, it's the same hazard. Right? Now the other thing, so Willie, well, you you were saying about why wouldn't the AC unit be in two ten point eight D? We cover AC if it's outdoors, it's covered. If it's indoors and cord and plug connected, it's covered because of four forty requirements yeah. that's required in the cord. Um, if if it's hardwired indoors, I don't know. I mean, your furnace downstairs. We don't have outlets covered in like no. like downstairs. Right? We have receptacle outlets covered downstairs. But your hot water tank, who that's hot wired or hot wired is hardwired, is not required to be just. Although although we have a lot of people who get killed on hot water tanks. And you know, this is back to the argument that we we have every I guess cycle. Uh, panel two, Tom and I serve from panel two, uh, which is the uh, code making panel responsible for 210.8 or you know, to yeah. access 210, which part of it Chapter, is yeah. GFCI, GFCIs, right? And whether we should protect all circuits in the ground, the all home circuit yeah. GFCIs or not. Yeah, I, I always voted for let's just go for the whole thing. And just I think uh, last yeah. cycle, last cycle, it it passed it in the passed first the, draft. It filled the ballot. Yeah, that's right. It passed in because the. It, the thing is, during the meeting, we only need a simple majority right. to, to get to create a first revision or a second revision. But yeah. then to, to to make the change in the code, we need two thirds which is the ballot, so it has to be two thirds right. of the votes. So it was, we got enough votes supporting the, the expansion of GFCIs in the home to cover all branch, protect all branch circuits. In this case, it doesn't matter if it's hardwired or or. Yeah. Court and block, it's like everywhere, everywhere you should have GSI protection. So we had enough votes to create the first division and the second division, if I remember correctly. But yep. then it wasn't two thirds of the panel member votes to right. make the change. So I guess for the public, it was killed. Like it never kind yeah. of made through. So, and Willie's saying, did the task group investigate EVSE? Now, the EVSE. GFCI requirement is actually not a part of our work. Oh, equipment, uh, electric vehicle supply equipment. Okay. Yeah, that's back in a different article. Um, um, but my understanding is the uh, charging 
And then any any charger that you are listed would have uh, personal protection. They right. could CCID five or CCID right, twenty. Right. So right. I'm not and sure then and then Willie was saying, I think on that case that you were you were talking about, he says, did the circuit have an EGC? And I don't know the answer to that. I think there was a problem with the equipment grounding conductor. Uh, and I think on it was, uh, the, the, if I remember correctly, that the details I can share the details because it was yeah, I I, oh, I happened right. to be at an RGPE. Just like a conference like this was in PCOS, another conference, walked into a room for a presentation. The author was talking, or the presenter was talking about something completely different, had nothing to do with GFCIs, but he was, he is a forensic engineer in Chicago, and he happened to be the individual who went and investigated this case. And he mentioned that we were between like, the first draft and second draft and during the public comment stage. And I walked, I went to talk to him after the uh, his presentation and said, hey, uh, I think his name was Tom too. I was like, can I, you know, would you, be, would you be okay? Like I introduced myself, and you know, I think we should work on fixing this problem so that no, we don't need to lose another life. This was sad. This boy would, should have been 20 years, 20 some years, almost 30, 30, 30 years now, had he made it right. It was, mm -hmm. I think it was 10 or seven years old when he lost his life. So I asked the presenter if he would be willing to share. The details with me because he was just talking like a generic and he was nice enough to go to, of course got the, the permission from the lawyers and from the family of that kid and he told me that they were waiting and they, the message was which is kind of really powerful that they want this to change so that this you know saves lives and that no one else would have to go through what they have gone through because of losing their child and uh, I, I told him when, when this happened and the, the you know the, the code was updated and, and he told me that they were happy that you know, there, there was something good came out of this tragedy. So he shared with me the pictures and the, the whole story. I believe it was some something, some problem with the unit, and then the maintenance guy came, and they miswired the unit, and there were some issues with the unit, and then it failed. So, that, you know, that, that's like a, a perfect storm kind of condition. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, and yep. this would take us, get us to the argument, you know, what if the person... A competent person and like you know who like well you know I, here's the thing you know yeah so the, the the key thing there is that in in my opinion GFCIs are not there for when things go right yeah. just like PPE That's you know it, you it's we I could make an you. argument I could make an argument that you don't need to wear an arc flash outfit if you're a qualified person because you shouldn't have an arc flash you know, you but I would never go there yeah, right you know, so you don't, wanna, you don't need to yeah. wear your seat belt or have airbags in your car because you're a professional driver. I mean, if, if someone says this, you'll be laughing, right? Because it doesn't make yeah. sense. But unfortunately, we still say the same thing when it comes to personal yeah. protection. Yeah. To me, it's the same. Why do we have seat belts? Why do we have airbags? You should be a competent driver. It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, I'm not going to No one is out there trying to get into a, a car accident. It just happens. Yeah. But you know what this... That's why they call it an accident. accident. Right. We just, you want to make sure that there are enough line of defense is to, 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 to hopefully minimize the impact. Right. So it's unfortunately reducing it's severity and likelihood. likelihood. Two right. things for risk, severity and likelihood. Right. Now, Willie Snyder says a hard wired dryer is not required to be GFCI protected. So the back of a dryer is not a dryer outlet. Well, I would disagree with you because a, a dryer, a closed dryer, is in 210.8D. I think this was and, recent. It wasn't there before, right? Right. And and uh, and if you hard, I mean, if you hardwire a dryer, you have to hardwire it to an outlet. But I think this was the loop, so, loophole because back in I think before this, the, because 210. It was just a receptacle. But I think what he's trying to say yeah. is that there's no outlet yeah. if it's hardwired, and I disagree with that because if it's hardwired, you have to have an outlet that you're wiring it into. Yeah, like how would you wire it? Right? But, and this is my point. This is kind of the loophole before rewriting 210. Because it was just a receptacle. It's just a receptacle. So if you hardwire it, oh, it's not receptacle. Yeah. But when you say outlet, like this, I think maybe we should cover the difference between outlet and, and receptacle for those who are not familiar. It took me a while to get used to it when I first yeah. joined panel two. But you know, once you say outlet, it's anything like your light outlet, for example. It's not a, it's a, recept a receptacle is an outlet, but an outlet is not a receptacle. Well, a receptacle is a receptacle outlet. Yeah. You know, a receptacle outlet is a receptacle inside of an outlet. Yeah. But I mean, so the, let's take it's a confusing. look at the. Sometimes like a receptacle, a receptacle outlet. Yeah. An like outlet is not a receptacle. Right. So, and and and, and, I, and I, I'm going to try to grab definition. the definition of an right. outlet here. And this is the only drawback to all of these definitions being in one place. 
Yeah, honestly, I did not like the change with this one, the style. When you are in, I loved, I loved the change, but I, I, like I, I liked it. But what I don't like about it is when I'm in, when I'm in NFPA Link, the list, and you're trying to scroll. So now I have to search for outlet. Yeah, like you know, and and you know there's people on both sides of that fence and and I you know and I I will uh I'll have to uh I I'll think ha sometimes you know, I know if the definition that only used in specific article why would you have to flip back and forth but this is just me yeah but see there's flipping back and forth like if somebody said where's the term is the term whatever defined then you got to like search through all of the different articles to see if that term's defined I mean, all right so here's the definition of outlet yeah. it is it's subjective right? there's and there's you know what he can he has every right to be wrong uh, sometimes so a point on the wiring system at which current is taken to supply utilization equipment so that is an outlet um, and if you're going to hardwire a dryer the dryer comes it's a big metal box and there's an there's a, uh, a a cord that comes with it and you have to tie that cord into your wiring system and there's going to be an outlet so I don't know what you mean, Willie. Um, <laughs> he says, I love the conversation. Uh, he says, I heard the inspector was sued. Do you know if the inspector was sued on that uh, job? I'm not sure. Honestly, I just had the details. This is kind of sometimes they don't share the details of the, of the, of the case. I, I, I don't even know what happened. Like, did they, uh, the family, did they get? So, I mean, it doesn't matter how much money they get, they lost their son, right? Yeah. But it's, uh, so I didn't really know the details, I haven't followed the details, but it just, to me, it was just enough that, you know, we we, we, we must stop those things. Tom always said, and I like, I like this is, I'm stealing this with Tom, but there that? is no reason for anyone at this day and age to, sure. to, to lose their life at the uh -huh. home. Especially this in a resident, Tom, Tom, where you yeah. should be, it, 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 should, yeah, where you should feel the safest. You should not succumb to the ill effects of electricity with the technology of where we're at today. Industrial environments, there's risk, right? Commercial installations, possibly no, a little bit more risk. There's risks everywhere, right? But like there, you know, just I mean, you just should not. But, but you know, have that gonna, maybe exposure. This will be our our closing remark. If you guys watch our. Did you do now? It was two days ago. The, uh, the one that we did on Monday because it would have been the first day of, of the birthday yeah, oh, presentation. Yeah. We talked about Lenny's for presentation, his safety oh, journey. And yes. I loved, and I, I said this during, if you go back and watch the video, Tom and I had this, I, I said the discussion, and I'm going to repeat this. We need to change, shift our mindset from compliance based mindset to risk-based mindset is and that 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 was lanny's was message Lanny, and that, and this was lanny and the the story no. behind this was the there was a study done you know the workplace injuries in the uk versus the us and they found that the 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 uh the us uh i guess worker or is four times high four times more likely to be injured or electrocuted, like to have an incident compared to the UK. And when they say, you know, there, of course, there are so many different reasons, but when they start looking into it more, the one big thing was in the UK, the mentality is risk, uh, is, is risk, uh, like risk based, which which is not that it's, it's kind of because he even said that it's not that you take more risks, that like they are more aware of risk and they try to, I guess, address the like risk assessment like 7E and try mm -hmm. to address those problems even if they have to go over and beyond the code which as we all know a code or a standard is the minimum requirement this is the minimum that you have to meet it's not that everything is great unfortunately in north america across from the pond the uh, mentality is more of a compliance mentality okay i met 70e i met the nec the canadian electric code then i'm good so this kind of made a four times more likely like likelihood increased by four times more likely of incidents in the us right. Uh, is four or four times more higher than the UK, so uh, and I guess it was a strong message. And she's talking about like, we need to, you know, start to think of the risk-based or create a risk-based culture mindset versus compliance-based. Because right now, oh, I meet 7E, I meet the National Electric Code, I meet whatever standard, Canadian Electric Code. Where I live in Canada, right? Right. But we shouldn't be thinking the minimal requirement. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's the nice. Just that hits home. That's an interesting, that's what I like about PCIC. I like that about the electrical safety workshop because they get down to the core of 
a lot of the risk yeah. and and controlling I risk call it assessment. yeah your risk is I call it manage I you can't say I can control risk but you can manage risk you can you can manage the likelihood and severity those are two of the key elements of risk that we can have some level of control over and sometimes we have no control over over the severity Okay, like 120 volt circuit, you touch it, you touch it. I mean, I can't control necessarily the severity unless I have GFC, I can reduce the amount of time and that. I can also reduce, I can't control whether or not you're gonna, you know, if I have an exposed conductor, unless I take steps, I can control the, the likelihood of you touching it, and I can't control the severity of that, you know, of that the, effect. Uh, industry, yeah. I think it's a good example that's really big on this, uh, the aviation industry. We all fly, right? I'm sure everyone on, on watching us now, mm -hmm. watching us later, has been on a plane at some point in time. It's high risk. When you know, when a crash, we did a crash. It's high severity. Sorry, high severity. Yeah. So, so high severity. <laughs> yep. Well, it's really high, it's severe. When there's a crash, yeah. there's a crash. Like what are the chances of people surviving? Very, right. very little. little. But then what they do is because of all the safety things that we all know flying, they try to the, the, they reduce they the likelihood yeah. to a level that is very, very safe that we can all fly. Right. Tom is flying to, uh, Friday and I'm flying Friday as well. Right. But it's really, really severe. Like when there is a, yeah. you know, that like, like just like a plane crashes, it's, it's fatal, yeah. it's yeah. deadly, but this won't stop us from flying because of the likelihood is thanks to all the pioneers and Lenny talked about this during his presentation too yeah. how like a lot of things that we do is driven from the nuclear power, power industry and the uh, aviation industry because these guys really really the, their severity is just like oh, off, absolutely. off the roof like yeah. off the charts it's just, you know when something bad happens it's like you, you, like the, the, there's no second chance with these guys nope. but the likelihood because they've been working for years and years and years to many ways you don't hear you know that like many incidents because right. of all the safety and measures that they take yeah. which unfortunately in the electrical industry we're not there yet we should try to be like these guys you know yeah and and that's and you know there's i think there's a uh, there's a spot in between here and here yeah. you know so uh, a lot of people just migrate all the ways over to the right and and do the maximum of everything and a lot of others go all the ways over to the left and say you don't need to do anything i think the right answer is somewhere in between and that's what i love about the nfpa process is that whole uh is the is the driving a decision to consensus you're not going to please everybody at the table but you're going to if you can get two-thirds to agree to something i think you're moving in the right direction that's so. the thing stop it's it's they, they, any standard, including the NEC or CME yeah. or Kenya, it's a it's a work in progress. It's a living document. That's yeah. why we meet every three years. So if we can make a change this year, then I mean this cycle to be next cycle. Yeah. And like Tom said, I will look forward to your public input. So Willie, maybe you should just uh, submit something. I think it's going to be soon, like next year, right? Next year, end of next, towards yeah. the end of next year, we're looking at public inputs for 2026. So then, start getting your public inputs worked on now while the 20 as you watch out there at the eastern section as you watch them deliver nec 2023 code changes you're going to you're going to see things that you go i don't know if i like that language it doesn't look clear to me uh, i may not agree with it or they didn't do enough or they did too much think about your substantiation think about what change you would talk to people at that meeting and say you know i'm not liking this how would you change it or uh, what and listen to their opinions on it that might help you formulate either formulate your your substantiation or maybe change your mind you never know and you know it's 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 hard to get it right on the first time and that's why i reach out to people. except for panel two panel two is perfect yeah no, panel I mean, two is perfect. Yeah. But I mean, like, even with public inputs, like, sometimes you just, like, you have to try one, one time and second yeah. time. So uh, just be the change that you want to see, right? This is what they say. I Absolutely say. right. Like so, yeah, I mean, try and... Try and try and try and make it happen. All right. I think that Nihad and I are spent... And um, this was a long video, I'd say. It's long it is. It got long because we, Willie Snyder was prodding us on, and I just yeah, saw. We were not planning to talk about the panel yeah, too. We were not planning on it at see, all. See, we just want to say goodbye, everyone, because this is the end. Of it. I don't know if you want to go live tomorrow after to maybe update everyone on your tutorial. 
Yeah. I, I don't know, but uh, in case we uh, we can go live for whatever reason tomorrow. Yeah, well, tomorrow I'm going to do the tutorial, and then I'm yeah. taking a couple people out to dinner. I think. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, yeah we're going to like uh, the Buckhorn, and then uh, and then I know yeah, I'm going to be. Uh, I got to get my stuff packed, yeah. because I want to wake up, get to the airport, and go. I want to be completely have everything put together. So. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you, well, thank Neha. You, Tom. Thank you for uh, having me, and thank you, everyone. It was also a pleasure to uh, be here with Tom. And yes, and and hopefully we will see you in New Orleans next year hopefully. at PCIC 2023. Yeah, I I forgot the dates. I think it's September. Uh, on their website. Go it's ahead. on the website, and I believe the link is still down below to the LinkedIn site. So go check that out I think it's the and third enjoy. Week of September. It should be uh, good times. Yes. Thanks for engaging, Willie. We appreciate you uh, watching, and I appreciate all of those Thank guys you. and gals out there who are going to be at the Eastern section. I know it's what eleven thirty Eastern time. Yes, it is. I, I don't. I, I can't remember where Willie Snyder's at. Though. I'm not sure, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, he. he I don't I mean, know. I don't know, Willie. I mean, it's nine thirty here. Even like yeah. here, it's still late. Nine thirty. It's still late. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. From PCIC in Denver, Colorado, 2022, PCIC was a huge success, had a blast. And I will say this, see you in New Orleans. And we will see you in New Orleans. Oh, Willie Snyder's in Denver. Just an hour, but oh, here. Yeah, yeah, he's in Denver. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, geez, oh, man. Yeah, how come you're not here? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you could be right here. We could have had a, oh, give me a break. That's it, Willie. You're cut off. You're done. You're dead to me. Like, we've been, like, talking every night. And you didn't see us, man. Oh, my gosh. Well, you up tomorrow. Yeah. All right. All right. That's it. With that, we're done. Yeah. We're truly night, done. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. Good night, everybody. Have a thank safe. You, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Nia, for everything you did this week. You did. Uh, you did great. So thank I you. really appreciate that. And All I right. My voice. So I apologize. I know I've been yeah. talking a lot. This kind of shows you how much networking we've been. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So good night. <laughs> the, uh, thanks, sir, for all of you guys out there and gals who, for what you do for the electrical industry, for electrical safety. Stay safe and please stay healthy. He said it. <laughs> he stole your thunder. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs>